This is rare. For those of you who follow the channel, you can probably count the number of times I sit in a chair to have a conversation with you. Anyway, we're going to talk about RAM in Apple 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro that is running on the M1 Pro and M1 Max and comparing between a 16 and 32 gigabytes memory using a live demonstration and different workflow and see which one you may want to choose. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. These Apple New Silicon are now using what they call a unified memory architecture where the RAM is being shared between the CPU and GPU, allowing quick access. Depending on the processor that you get, the M1 Pro, the RAM speed can be up to as high as 200 gigabytes per second, and the M1 Max, the speed can be as up to as high as 400 megabytes per second. This is extremely fast and faster than pretty much anything that is on the system or any other system is out there for that matter. For instance, as a reference, these computers, the SSD can write at about five gigabytes per second and read at about the same speed. So obviously the RAM on the system, it's going to be much faster and it's going to lead us into the topic for this conversation we're about to have with regards to RAM. Before we do that, let's talk about the test system. I have two configuration with me right here. Both of these are the M1 Pro processor. I have the base 16 inch model that has been upgraded to a one terabyte SSD. This has 16 gigabytes of unified memory. And I have the 14 inch model, which has the base processor, base GPU. That one has 32 gigabytes of memory and the SSD is 512 gigabytes. And we're going to see how these two systems perform. I have one more system coming in, which is the M1 Max that has 64 gigabytes of unified memory. And I really want to see how the memory would play in when you use all these different apps. So real world benchmark regarding RAM, let's start to look at Lightroom Classic. When we do an import export with 1000 files, I mean, obviously this is pretty much not giving us any differences whatsoever. The time that you see there between bumping to 16 to 32, it's pretty much almost the same. In fact, the reason why the 14 inch is a touch slower is because it has two less cores. That is the base model with the base processor. Let's have a look at the export result from Lightroom. Again, not quite as impressive, pretty much what we expect now because RAM doesn't really do that much at all when it comes to importing, generating preview, and also exporting from Lightroom. What about running on battery? Well, not that much. Everything is pretty much within the margin of error that we would expect. We start to see the trend already. HDR merge using nine Nikon DA10 file, which are a CPU heavy task. We can see that the time are now pretty much head to head with each other with these two machines. However, let's have a look at panoramic merge in Lightroom. 14 Nikon D8, 10 files, 36 megapixel combined together to create 314 megapixel images. Let's see how this one does and voila. Having more RAM definitely does improve the performance in Lightroom in certain tasks. So if you do a lot of panoramic merge, you work with large files, you work with composite, you're going to see a huge difference when you bump into more RAM. And also when you want to work on these files, for example, you have a lot of these adjustment layer on them. I'm going to show you a demonstration in just a moment here, how much faster having 32 gigabytes of RAM is without any slowdown in the system versus a bigger machine, for instance, like the 16 inch one that has only 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're going to start to see the difference. But before then, let's talk about a few more photo apps before we do the demonstrations. Next one up is Capture One. Preview time, pretty much what we expected. Because the 14 inch, the one over there is just a touch slower, two less cores, takes a little bit longer, but I mean, the base model is performing really respectively well. Export, as we can see, what we expect so far, because this doesn't use any more RAM in the system than we would expect it. It doesn't encroach on pretty much the ceiling once it's kind of reached there. I mean, we're not really seeing a big improvement here. What about Photoshop? For Photoshop, I'm using Lloyd Chamber script to run the test because it's going to give me the most consistent result. I'll leave links to his site in the description below. Photoshop speed, this is pretty much just testing CPU speed. We're not seeing any gains here between the two. In fact, the 14 inch one is a little bit slower when it comes to these speed tests. So if you want a fast Photoshop performance as well, I would probably bump up the processor. But otherwise, I mean, we're not really seeing a big improvement on the RAM yet. But now when we start to work with 15 point six gigabyte medium Photoshop file size. Look at the time. It almost get cut in half and the more RAM we feed it, you can literally see between 
the 70 and the 90 percent the more ram we feed it the more faster it can perform you can see there in the second blue line that when we increase it to 90 percent the time drops even further when we have a large file let's look at a 56 gigabyte file in photoshop it's definitely much faster so this is the reason why you may want to consider getting more ram to your system Quickly, I want to show you the Final Cut Pro export result for H.264. Pretty much is the same as using the encoder engine. HEVC is again the same with each other because it uses the exact same encoding engine and the same story with ProRes 422. So let's jump into Lightroom and have a look at how these machines perform. So let's start out in Lightroom Classic. I'm running Lightroom Classic 11. This is the latest version that is available as of this filming. And normally when I try to edit this panorama that is 192.3 megapixel, I generally run into a problem. The only computer that can handle this file without any slowdown is generally my Mac Pro. And I'll show you some of the settings I have done on here so far. I mean, you can see here that I have so many layers in the mask and everything. And normally if I tried to do this on my Intel MacBook Pro, this would just freeze really quickly. So let's see what happens when we zoom into like 67% for this. As you can see there, I'm just really accidentally clicked by adding a gradient filter and you can see the slowdown happening already. When I load this file into the system, we can notice up here, if you pay attention here, we can see that the RAMs is now pretty much being used in the system and the free RAM that we have is going to constantly decrease. The pressure on the system right now is at 53%. Anytime you have the pressure that kind of goes up above, I would say 50 or so, or even higher than that, it means you probably need more RAM in your system. And this is using iStat menu to gather all these data. All right, so let's kind of zoom out a little bit here and you can see all the points that I have put into this picture. It is ridiculous. But what I have done here is start out with a clean slate. We'll do some basic editing, which I think is going to be able to handle everything that I throw at it pretty much just fine without any issues. But I think that when I start to go in and refine this a little bit more, it's going to start to choke a little bit. So we'll see what it does. I'm doing the basic editing right now. This is my 16 inch MacBook Pro and this one has 16 gigabytes of memory. So, so far so good. I was able to handle things smoothly, but I mean, all these sliders generally don't slow the computer down that much. What happens though, is that when we go in and throw in, for instance, a select sky, well, we can start to see that now computer is now using up a lot of RAM and now we only have like what 1.6 gig free at just a moment. It's taking a little bit longer to do select sky so I can do this. And for instance, I'm going to darken the sky down just like so and also increase the contrast. I'll make the sky a little bit more like blue and a little bit more natural just like that. What I want to do here though with select sky is that I want to go in and refine some of these selections. So what I want to do is subtract. And this is where I think we're going to start to see the behavior becoming very interesting. So I will have an overlay showed and you can see that the red is now covering the mountain ranges. I'm going to have both a screen capture and a capture video of this so you can kind of see if the system really slowed down or something. You will see to resolve that but I've run so many tests on this already and you can kind of see that result. So I'm going to click on subtract here and use the brush. For this brush I will use auto mask. And what this is going to do is refine the edge for me and I'm going to start to drag. And as you can start to see, this is taking a little bit for it to catch up. I'm done with that line already and the program hasn't yet fully caught up with me. All right, so let's continue here. I'm dragging over here already and you can see the spinning beach ball is happening. Right now, if we take a look at our RAM usage, this is probably going to pretty much plummet. And right now I'm also using around 7.3 gigabytes of swap of eight gigabytes. So it's swapping files to my system like crazy, including showing Lightroom Red here, and the memory pressure is now at 70%. Let me put it this way. I know that not all of you are going to be editing 192 megapixel file, but if you do any type of panoramic merge like these and you use a high resolution sensor, for example, you have the Sony R3, R4, or even just the R2, or even if you have a lower resolution sensor and you come in and do these type of work, definitely get more RAM because like I said, the moment it starts to swap, the moment you see that spinning beach ball, everything kind of slows down. 
I mean, Mac is doing a really great job right now. You saw that number just really dropping. So it's constantly moving the RAM in and out and it does a really good job there. But a lot of these swaps happen too. And the long-term side effect of this is wear on your SSD. So also make sure that if you're going to get 16 gigabyte configuring your machine with something higher than 512 because you're going to need a lot more of that SSD for swapping. You can kind of see that this is not necessarily the smoothest and we're constantly pushing a brink for what this machine can do. I mean, here's another spinning beach ball. I think you have a good demonstration here. So what I'm going to do is jump onto my 14 inch MacBook Pro. I'm going to reset this setup and take this exact catalog, reset this file, bring it over to that machine and show you how much smoother it is when you run it with 32 gigabytes of memory. All right, so I have the 14 inch laptop set up. I am now back in Lightroom. A few things I wanted to mention is that I'm running the image library off a Samsung T5 SSD, but this is not really what's going to cause the slowdown. What you see a moment ago was literally program swapping files to the SSD. And with this system, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM and we are going to see the difference really quickly. So let's have a look here. There are no swaps starting out and pretty much the memory pressure is really low. Let's go in and edit this image. So I'm starting from scratch again. I reset everything here. Let's take it into the develop module. Preview happens almost quickly, very instantaneously. This is much faster than an Intel machine to start out with. What I'm going to do is hide the side panel there because everything is kind of small here on the smaller screen where it makes it harder to use. And I'll go in, adjust this picture the way how I normally do it. We'll start out with a base file that looks pretty good and then we'll go in and apply a whole bunch of localized adjustment and see how the machine can pretty much keep up with the whole thing. All right, I'll do that. And what I'm gonna do now is go in here and do a select sky. So it's automatically go in to choose the sky. And I can tell you right now that not timing this, Selecting Sky on 32 gigabytes of memory is actually faster than doing Select Sky on a 16 gigabytes of RAM because the computer has much more room and much more power to process things. I'll go and increase contrast a little bit and make the sky a little bit blue. Change the tone a little bit here, the tint. And now what I am going to do is show you what I have done earlier. So I'll zoom into around 67%, which may be a little bit too much for this laptop. So let's go and pick a different zoom here. Let's do it at 50%, perfect. And we'll move into the mountain range area right now. You can see that this sky selection is covering the mountain range top because the tone is so close to each other. I don't want that. So I'm gonna click on show overlay and I will click on subtract using brush. Again, auto mask is on, so it'll automatically detect the lines and everything. And just to let you know, I'm really doing this kind of like fast and loose because this is more of a demonstration. But we can see right now that when you give the system the room and the RAM, it is now using a lot of memory on the system where the free memory right now is sitting at 10.2. This is a 32 gigabyte machine. So that means this is already using more than half the memory. And yes, there is some still free, but there is no swap and the memory pressure is still 36%. All right, let's go in and start at this corner and we are going to drag along the mountain range here. You can see that this machine, as I'm just literally moving my mouse around, it's pretty much just keeping up with this, what I'm doing, no problem whatsoever. RAM usage right there, free, was dropping down to around 7%. Memory pressure is going up, but no swap whatsoever. And that no swap is increasing that speed between what I'm doing, so I'm not seeing that beach ball. In fact, I can go through this entire mountain range here and not have that slow down that beach ball even once on this 32 gigabyte machine. Like I said before, not all pros work with these kind of files that are these huge, but if you work with a file that's maybe just even half or a third the size, you may run into these problems when you add in so many layers like this into a file, so many adjustments that if you're that kind of person, if you are kind of the composite person in Lightroom and Photoshop doing all these things, 32 gigabytes of memory are going to be a huge benefit. You can see right now that there is literally no slowdown. It is catching up with me in every single thing that I do without any problems. And still there is some RAM left on the system. And yes, the pressure is up to 50%, but again, 
difference on this system and the other one is that there is absolutely no swap whatsoever. So no writing to the SSD, which means that it's just using the super high speed fast RAM that is available on the system. If you do video, for example, you're using Final Cut Pro, is this going to make a difference? I would probably say having more RAM may not necessarily make a difference in Final Cut Pro at all because it's just using the encoder engine. But this, I mean, my goodness, I'm able to go through here without any problems. And I just changed the way how that looks. So change it to a different color there. And you can see that I'm able to just go through these mountain ranges without any issues without any spinning beach ball and I still have some RAM left to use on the system. Another thing I want to add in some thoughts about this is that if you are the multitasker like I am, I am notorious for having multiple Safari tab open at any given time, like in the 50 plus range, it's unhealthy, I know. But if you do that and you have mail program running on at the same time, those two are now using system RAM. And then if you run Lightroom also, which I normally don't close things down, I just leave things running because if I get an email, sometimes just pop out to answer it quickly or I need to reference the data, I'll go into the web page quickly or something to lollygag. Well, having 16 and having the swap is definitely going to see a performance decrease, but this, this is really healthy. I still had RAM left and also the swap is still at zero. I'm going to test this on the 64 gigabyte model that I'm getting in in a few days as well. However, I feel that 32 is going to be the sweet spot for a photographer because this is a highly demanding image that I'm putting in a Lightroom right now. And the fact that this base 14 inch, this is the base model with upgraded RAM can handle this just fine. Personally, if you're looking to get a machine and if you're looking at the 14 inch model, you're a photographer doing a lot of composite large files, get the base, upgrade the RAM, upgrade the SSD, and you're set. Anyway. I hope that you find this conversation of why you may need more RAM in your system helpful. Again, I know that not all of you are going to do this, but this is now showing the clear benefit and the differences between a 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM, especially if you are a photographer. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust. So I just stopped the screen capture, but here's my cursor going behind the notch. Oh, oh, it's popping out a little bit. Let's see, push it up all the way, slide it behind the notch. I'm hiding my cursor and just like that, I'm a magician. It comes out on the other side. Woohoo! <laughs> so amazingly enough, the cursor doesn't just go around the notch like this. And yes, it does look like that, but that's me doing it because you can just tuck it in under that and just hide it. Yeah, this is super late. I'm doing a late night filming. It's 3 a.m. So yeah, you can actually see the time on the computer. It's 3 a.m. So yeah, might be a little bit loopy. All right, we'll catch you guys in the next video.